record this Zoom video and put it on YouTube for y'all. I'll do that for all the lectures, assuming my computer doesn't crash on me. And y'all are right here. All right, so here's your, your syllabus for the semester. This is a uh, math 13, 14, section 37. Um, it is along with, what's this other class? Co-rec something, math 0214. So these two classes kind of go together. Um, combined, we basically have a two hour uh, class on Mondays and Wednesdays. The first two weeks is going to be in Zoom. Hopefully, uh, we can go back to campus after that. When we go back to campus, I'm going to still use Zoom in the classroom to teach the class like a hybrid. So if you can't make it to class, you should still be able to Zoom in. Um, hopefully, if all the technology works for me. Okay. Uh, Joseph, uh, this is Jay Johnson. I have one quick question. Yeah. With you teaching this as a hybrid as Zoom, this is literally the only class this semester that I'm having to take. Will it still be required if I show up as an in-person or will I have the opportunity to do it as just as a Zoom class? I'm trying to make it to where you could just Zoom in. Uh, that's, that's okay. Cool. You know, so you have the best of both worlds options. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, thank you. Please keep me apprised because not that I don't mind driving in. I, but And I live an hour away. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I don't have to, you know, that's great. You know, I don't exam days, finals. That's perfectly fine. I accept that. I understand that. But if everything else, if I can do it Zoom, that'd be fantastic. But if not, I'll I'll roll with whatever is available. OK, sounds good. All right, thank you, sir. Sure. All right, uh, my name is Joseph Stein and office hours anytime after class or by appointment. Uh, we have plenty of class time. You can always ask me stuff during class. Um, let's see, the tutoring lab. I'm not sure if this link here is correct. I think that's last semester's, but I updated it down here. You have free tutoring to the tutoring lab via Zoom and there's tutoring on campus. So you have lots and lots of uh, resources there. I need to update this, get rid of the old link there. Give me one second. Jay Johnson again. Since the class is literally about two hours long, is there gonna be like about a 10, 15 minute break? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we'll be either taking a break in the middle of class or, you know, if I expect class is going to run a little short, I'll ask you if you'd rather skip the break and just get out early or, you know. Um, All right. Thank you, sir. You know, Sorry for the interruption. Hey, anytime. That's why we're here. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can always contact me through the Canvas email. There is an app on your, you can download the Canvas app for your phone, for those of y'all that are not aware of that yet. And that usually notifies me when I have an email. Um, when I'm not teaching, I'm uh, doing housekeeping at a hotel for $10 an hour, scrubbing toilets. So I might not be able to get back to you uh, as quickly as I'd like to, but. I will get back to you. So this course is uh, for non-STEM majors, uh, for pre-nursing, elementary education, et cetera. Do we have any uh, education majors in here? Speak up, because there's a committee for education majors that would want to come into class and uh, give you all a speech about all the resources available. So if you're an education major, uh, let me know now or uh, send me an email so I can uh, coordinate. All right, your textbook is a PDF. I think I have the up-to-date one. You can download it right here, download textbook. Uh, the homework and answer key, that's extra added stuff. 
all right? Uh, the textbook has problems in it, and there's an answer key in the back of that. And that's what I'll be teaching out of. The homework here and the homework answer key is just extra stuff or extra problems for you to work. All right, it seems like you can get a, a, the textbook, they call it a packet, free of charge. Um, just go through the links here. If the digital version isn't good enough for you, you know, you want that printed copy. So the grading homework, I'm not going to assign homework, but I do recommend that you'll work all the problems in our packet or textbook um, and, and keep up with working the problems. So instead of having a, um, you know, several big exams, uh, what I do is I give you a small exam every day at the end of class. There's only two problems. And I give you a, a short quiz at the beginning of class every day with only two problems. Because I think it's unrealistic to give an exam with, you know, 30 problems on it. Because in the real world, we're typically uh, faced with one big problem or maybe a one big problem and a little problem, you know, is more realistic. And so, and it also keeps you from just pro procrastinating and then cramming, which isn't the best way to learn. So I'm just gonna give you a little exam every day uh, at the end of class, and you'll have until uh, midnight basically to get your answers submitted for the quizzes and the exams. Um, as long as you get them in on time, you get full credit. If you're late with them, uh, you lose half credit. And that's just because the solutions will already be posted in Canvas. So if you miss something, you can still get half credit pretty easily because the answers are going to be in Canvas. So all you need to do is copy the answers down and upload them, and you'll still get at least half credit. So I should not see any zeros from any of y'all this semester. All right. I'm dropping your five lowest quiz grades and your five lowest exam grades. Um, to, uh, you know, I would have done one or two, but since we have COVID going and things are a little more difficult, I'm bumping it up to five lowest grades to deal with, you know, in any of the uh, things that we can't, you know, imagine ahead of time that might happen to us this semester. So I'm getting over COVID right now. My whole family is. It's the second time. <laughs> so the quizzes are 30%. The exams are 50%. Um, your final exam will be 20%. And uh, uh, you know, none of y'all should have too much trouble with this class this semester. I'm not here to, to make math you know, any harder than it needs to be. Look. Uh. Quick question. Two of them, actually, Jay Johnson again. Um, you did say that on the daily exams and quizzes, those are going to be due by midnight of that night or that yeah. day, correct? Okay. Right. And also, I had noticed in your syllabus that, and I'm guessing that it is from last semester that you had where our final exam is on Wednesday, December 8th from 3.30 to 6.15. I'm assuming that's... That's not correct, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. All right, thank you. I haven't looked up to see when the final exam is yet. Thanks for uh, uh, pointing that out. All right, yes, sir, sorry, thank you. No, thank you. You're welcome. Let's see, let me update that. Oh, two, one, four, oh, five. Let me update this real quick. On the math tutoring, I know that my last semester that I had the uh, the professor or teacher, she required so many hours 
Yeah. In the math lab, do we have to do that for this uh, this class? You don't have to, but if you, if you need help with the homework or anything, take advantage of it. Okay. All right. Do you receive uh, like a report saying, you know, John Smith, you know, spent eight hours they you know, during this week? They won't or? this class, no, because uh, there's no grade uh, associated with the lab or with tutoring, not in this class. In the elementary algebra, yeah, they require like 800 minutes of lab time. Yes, sir. But not in here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right. So that's basically the syllabus. Everything you need to know there. Um, well, let's see. I can go through the other links here. Um, so under files. Let's see. Huh. Uploaded media. Yeah, under uploaded media, here's your uh, textbook here, college algebra homework packet. I don't know why I put it in that folder, but I wonder if I can rename the folder. Okay, Mr. Stein, I just actually clicked on files. Yeah. And... I don't know about anybody else's, but mine is showing this folder is empty. You could probably make a whole new folder, put it in there, because it seems like it's not available to us. Oh yeah, because look, look, there's a there's an I that crossed out. At the so you see upload media Friday size at the end of it. There's an eyeball, and it's showing that it's not visible to students. Okay. All right, then. But like I was saying, you could probably just make a whole new folder and make it every easier for everyone else to find. Oh, yeah. oh and that eyeball. doesn't have the eyeball on it either, so it's available. Publish. Oh, you probably just publish. But if you're making a whole new file, it's probably not that serious. All right. That seems to work. Let me see. Then I don't need this one. And I'm going to rename it. Yeah. Let's make sure y'all have access to this textbook and stuff. There. Is this the same thing as the college algebra core was a course packet? Yeah, it's the course packet. Yeah. It was just like the online part of it. It's just a PDF file. So is this the same stuff that was in the syllabus, the links you could click on? Uh, yeah, hopefully they all work. <laughs> what kind of calculator are we going to need? Is it just like a basic scientific calculator? I just use the calculator on my phone. Awesome. Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, Fifty dollar calculator for no reason. <laughs> I went on Amazon. It's coming in the mail in like a couple of days. Well, it, the the fancy one you have might be a little easier to use when we get to doing finance problems and stuff. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> Calculating interest. Yeah, it, it, it'll come in useful. But there's, you know, you know, always even pull up Google. There's plenty of apps, you know, calculator apps you can download uh, to do math for you. You know, there's I don't know why they require you to buy a whole separate calculator these days. It's crazy. I thought I saw something how we weren't allowed to use like calculators on apps. So that's why I was like, oh, okay. So no, in here, I want you to use as much technology as you can because okay. that's what you're going to have in your hand the rest of your life. You know, absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. So let me go ahead and put a folder here now. So any of the lecture notes I will post here after class. So if you miss class for some reason and you don't know what the quiz or the exam was, it's always going to be here in the lecture notes right after class. Okay. And again, I'm recording this on Zoom. I'll upload all the videos to uh, YouTube. And here in the syllabus later, there will be a link under YouTube somewhere. Uh, I had a quick question. Oh, what's your attendance policy? I, I only ask because I might have to miss sometimes my- As long as you get the exam and quizzes in, that's how I'm gonna measure you. Okay, cool. Because there might be times I might not be able to 
do class. I help take care of my three-year-old nephew because my sister's got cancer. Oh, no. So I'm there over there a lot. So there might be some times where I just can't make it if she has like a doctor's appointment or something. That's why I do the uh, the quiz and the exam as your attendance grade. Awesome. I'm, okay, cool. I'm putting the video recordings on YouTube so that you can always watch it later. You awesome. Know? And so I should count that. I consider that attendance if you just watch that. But the way I measure it is if you turn in the quiz and the exam. Okay. Uh, at the cool. end of the day, that's how I check off and attendance. You did say that the quiz and the exam are both like just two questions, two or three questions, right? Yeah, here, let's do uh, quiz number one. Quiz number one. Well, I guess before we do this, uh, I should tell you a little bit about myself so y'all know who y'all are dealing with this semester. Uh, let's see, I grew up in Bandera. I don't know if y'all know where Bandera is. It's not too far away. Graduated high school in 1996 and I went to UTSA because it was the closest college to my house. And I studied computer science and it was really, really hard and I hated it. And what made it even harder was all the math classes because the learning how to program was time consuming enough. And then I had these math classes that didn't seem to be you know, that important. But I was a solid C student, took six and a half years, got a bachelor's degree, and I did not want to go work in a cubicle programming, doing something I sucked at with a bunch of dweebs. So I went to the counseling office and they said, well, you've already taken a bunch of math. If you just take a few more math classes, uh, you can have a bachelor's degree in math. And maybe the job market will be a little different by then. It's like, OK. So I started taking I had all math classes. I think I had seven of them. I don't know why I thought I could take seven math classes. But that semester, mathematics finally fell in love with me. It's, I guess I just taken enough of it where it finally clicked. And since I was focused only on math and not anything else, you know, I didn't have a bunch of English classes or programming classes, you know, I got to immerse myself in it. And I finally saw it as the language that it is. And, uh, you know, more of an art, you know, like poetry than uh, just symbols you had to manipulate to get a grade. So I did that and then uh, I continued to stay. I got a, my master's in math at UTSA. And there's no PhD program at UTSA. So I was like, well, what am I going to do now? So I just started taking math and physics classes uh, because they had math and physics, you know, um, and waited for a PhD program. Well, the program never came, but a PhD in physics program started. They paired up with Southwest Research Institute and had a PhD in space physics. So I went into that, but I also created a uh, corporation, an educational charity to produce free informal math and science education for everybody on the planet. This is back when like YouTube and Facebook were still kind of in their infancy. So I was recording my lectures like we, I'm doing now, but I was using a different program called Camtasia and uploading all the lecture videos and uh, my students at UTSA, my classes were 180 students and I had four classes. And so I would post the lecture videos online and made coming to class optional so that if they came to class, we'd spend our time creating new and um, unique educational materials. Like uh, some kids developed like web applets or uh, games. It turns out the Nintendo Wii uh, you can go to the, the web browser on that and go to websites and interact with the applets. So we did that and uh, students subtitled and dubbed the lectures in different uh, languages, created lots and lots of art. We just had a lot of fun creating a lot of educational content that was fun, you know, and related to everybody's passions, <clears throat> which was kind of what I was trying to do with my corporation globally is kind of like a micro test, you know, but uh, teaching full time and trying to get my PhD in theoretical physics full time and building the corporation and getting my wife's citizenship. Uh, I had been taking Adderall for like a few years and it worked great. 
until I had to deal with all this stuff and I started abusing it. And it didn't take long to where I was just totally burnt out, completely burnt out, got divorced. I stuck in there for another two years trying to teach through this addiction. And I just gave up. I decided I needed to, to get sober and get the stuff out of my system, you know, because every time I try to quit taking it, I just couldn't function. I couldn't wake up. I couldn't do anything. So I quit teaching. I quit, dropped out of my PhD. So I got a master's in physics along with my master's in math and bachelor's in computer science. But um, none of that education helps you if you're addicted to amphetamines. So I dropped out of everything, thought I could get well in a semester or two, but without being on campus around smart people, being inspired and having zero income, uh, I live way out in the country. I just lost my mind completely. Uh, the drugs the psychiatrist gave me to help me get off drugs just blew my mind, put me in a totally dissociative state where you lose the concept of self itself. Like I spent several months barely able to refer to myself in third person. From there, I ended up addicted to methamphetamines. And uh, then there's several more years of absolute torture. I finally got busted, put on probation. Part of my probation was a treatment program. And it's like, that's all I ever wanted was rehab. I just didn't know how to get there, uh, especially with no money. So they sent me their treatment program. Well, it turns out their treatment program has nothing to do with rehab. They don't tell you that it's located in prison. And so they send my ass to prison and uh, it's just their treatment program is to treat you as horrible as they possibly can so that you never come back. Of course, that doesn't work very well. About 95% of the people that go there end up going back. You know, I was one of the fortunate few that didn't have to go back, you know? It's just a big metal building with like 80 people in it. No air conditioning. It's like 120 degrees. There's rats and cockroaches everywhere. And uh, they said it's a six month program. Well, first you have to wait in jail for a bed to open. Then you go to the six month program. When you get there, they say, no, it's nine months because you've had depression. Okay, great. Well, after that, you go to a halfway house. So the nine months of incarceration finally falls through and then they say well no you can't go you have to wait for a bed to open at the halfway house so you stay in prison another three months waiting for a bed to open at the halfway house then you make it to the halfway house and three months there so their little three month their treatment program uh, turned out to be a year and a half of incarceration which they don't tell you when you sign up for probation but I managed to make it through all that. And the coolest part about that was they had a GED program. And so a lot of my, I call them classmates, but we we're inmates, you know, they had to study math. And so I ended up teaching math the whole time I was in there to people of all kinds of walks and lives, you know, heavy duty murderers. They, they just did 25 years for murder and they have to go through the same treatment program to get out on parole. People with, all kinds of schizophrenia and all kinds of medication, poor people, a lot of people that couldn't read and write at all, a lot of gang members. But, you know, we all kind of came together in there through our education, specifically trying to learn math, you know. So I got to teach math to everybody in there. I was even teaching the guards because they, uh, some of them were studying to be nurses and such. And so that's pretty much what revived me. I got out of there and um, after a couple of years of staying sober, doing like remodeling and housekeeping, uh, Northwest Vista, uh, I finally had the courage to contact them and they gave me a second chance. <clears throat> so I've been teaching for about two years now, which is nice. You know, I taught for seven years at UTSA while I was a full time student for 15 years there. But uh, so I'm happy to be back and uh, teaching y'all. I mean, this is what I live for. Uh, I have a one year old little girl now. Uh, it's the life of my life. She's just everything to me, you know. So y'all might get to meet her. Her name is Lily. Uh, she's with her mama right now with COVID uh, isolating. So 
hopefully they'll be well soon. So that's a little about me. Um, so quiz number one is tell me a little about you. So um, I, I know I said by midnight, right? But uh, I want y'all to upload this during class just so that I can make sure y'all all know how to upload your answers into Canvas. So this is kind of not just me getting to know you, but we're also doing a little tech review. So I wanna make sure everybody knows how to upload their submissions uh, and assignments under quiz number one. So let's take about 10 minutes, um, you know, right? However much you want, just make it fun and uh, uh, get your, uh, your uh, loaded. I, I find the easiest thing to do is just write it on paper, take a snapshot with your phone and upload it. If you're using a tablet or something, you can always write it, do a screenshot and then upload that. Basically whatever works for you. D don't, don't send me Microsoft files. Try to keep it like a JPEG, you know, like an image file or a PDF. My computers are old and they have a hard time loading Microsoft Office because it's so bloated. What about uh, Microsoft Word? Yeah. If, Even that one? Yeah, if you could just send an image, you know, because for my computer to load that, it has to load it through the internet from campus's Microsoft server or something. It just doesn't work very well. Okay, understandable. And or I forget, beautiful story. I can definitely relate to it very much. Yeah, the, the chat. Yes. No. Congratulations, man. Thank you. No, congratulations to you. I'm very, very happy for you. Yeah, I got off probation last Wednesday after five years. Congratulations. They gave me 10 years, uh, but they let me off early for good behavior, which they were kind of mind blown. They'd never seen anybody actually get off early before. <laughs> Well, you're making history many times over. I'm very happy and very proud of you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, another quick question. Do you prefer Mr. Stein or Joseph? You can call me Joseph. It's fine. Okay. Thank you very much, Joseph. I appreciate that. Um, just to be sure, this doesn't have to be in like formal, like MLA format. Like this can just be like real informal, right? Yeah, this is okay. however you want to say it, you know? I can just put it in the comments and submit an assignment. What's that? I can just like where it says file upload Google Doc, I can just put it, my answer in the comments and just submit an assignment. Um, I prefer if you write it down and upload the the picture because that's how all, everything else is done. I might not see the comments, you know. Okay. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. You could try it uh, and I'll check here and see what it looks like. Uh, what What's your name? Uh, Joe or Joseph. Okay. Let's see what it looks like when you put it in the comments. Geiger, a miss? Right, yes, sir. All right. Yeah, I think you have to upload a file. Otherwise, it says real big the student does not have a submission for this assignment. Y'all calm down over there.
question. Uh, what area on Canvas are we posting it on? Uh, it should be under assignments. There should be a link there for a quiz one and a link for an exam one. So let's go under the quiz. Let's see. Find it. The student view here. Um, you should be able to go to assignments. If you have that app on your phone, the Canvas app, it might be even easier under there, you know? You have a smartphone, you just take okay, a Okay, then I put, you're probably there on my phone because the assignment uh, section is not popping up on my computer. Okay. There we go. I went ahead and submitted mine. All right, great. I got seven uploads so far here. Mm. This was quiz one, correct? Not exam? Yes, this is the quiz number one. Okay. I just uploaded mine. I hope it's legible. I'm still figuring out like how to write on my iPad. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, let's see what what's your name? I'll look at it and make sure. Eighty. It's a notes screenshot. Yeah, that should work just fine. And I just uploaded mine, Joseph. Okay. All right, thank you. I took a picture of it with my phone and sent it to my email and I'm trying to like download that as a file. I don't know if that's what we're doing here. Um, Usually you should be able to get it that way. Okay, so I think I'm just waiting for my email to get it in my inbox.
Uh, Mr. Stein. Yes. Yeah, you said a JPEG would be okay? Yeah, that should be just fine. Okay. Yeah, if you have the Canvas app on your phone, you should be able to just take a snapshot of your screen if you're writing on a computer or a piece of paper. If you wrote on a piece of paper, you should be able to just take a snapshot and uh, upload it. Yeah, that, I tried that. It doesn't work. I have to use that other uh, app to, what is it, Genius Pen to get it into Canvas. The, let me find that. There's a, I just learned about that yesterday. Um, I don't know where that is. That was under file. It was, it was one of the recommended uh, apps that they told us to download for one of my other classes. Yeah. Stand um, there and then um, you have to upload it into your, send it to your, your email and then you take it from there and send it into Canvas. Yeah, what, what was the app? It's Magic Scan? Genius Scan. Genius Scan. Genius Scan app. And what that does is it takes the file, right? Turns it into a PDF file yeah. and cleans it up, makes it easier to read. And if you have multiple images, it'll put them together in one file, under one PDF. I just, I just use Google uh, Docs and then download it as a PDF. Yeah, that'll work too. I just took a picture of the QR from mobile login. So I was able to log in that way. It was probably the easiest way to do it. There's another one. Cam scanner. Cam scanner. Yeah. There's links to that online in Canvas somewhere. I just can't find it now. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh -huh. I'll upload this. Hmm. Oh, I'll this. Yeah, I found a file here. So under textbook and stuff, there's a file called scanning and uploading a PDF file in Canvas for students. Uh, so if you have any issues, you can check that out. That, that, I think that file tells you about Genius Scan and, and such um, to help you out. I and, believe I just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I believe I just submitted it to the app. Okay. Yeah. Pretty simple. Excuse me, Mr. Stein. Again, you said upload it to the uh, quiz, correct? Yes. Okay. We got 18 uploads. Let's do this. 22. So I'll give you all uh, y'all y'all can add till the end of the day. When I, when I give you the quizzes and exams throughout the semester, I say get them in by the end of the day. If you don't, 
just get them in as soon as you can, because if I haven't graded them yet, I'm still going to give you full credit. All right. So even if you miss the midnight deadline, just get it in as soon as you can. Um, um, quick question. So when you um, give us assignments and stuff like that, just the way that I submitted it now, I could just for future references, I guess, or um, just do it just like that, like take a picture through Canvas and send it to you through the app. Yeah. Okay, cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I'll do it all semester. So try to keep it simple. Yes, sir. yes absolutely. It's simple. All right. So here's our textbook. I'm going to start at the beginning of it and work our way all the way through it. So it's for both 1314 and 0214. Hey, let me know if y'all's is different. If y'all have the, y'all got it through the school, like a printed copy. I'll make sure I have the up, that we're all working with the same version. This is the October 17th, 2020 version. Uh, professor, no, I, I have a hard copy that I got from the school. Uh-huh. It's been revised on October 22nd, 2021. Okay, so I'll need to get the updated version. All right. Uh, I'm sure it's pretty close. So yeah, later today, I'll try to update the file in here. And then next class, I'll let y'all know to download the, the updated version. If I can find it. So yeah, Northwest Vista writes this thing. I have a quick question about the like in hand packet. Is that something that needs to be returned or am I allowed to write in it? I think it's yours to keep. I, I was assuming so because my other textbook had like a return date, but this doesn't. Yeah, Just wanted to make sure before I scribbled all over it. It's a printed copy. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, all right. Let me, uh, let's check the syllabus and see what it says. I had to return the paper copy. And, um, yeah, because I think they're just printing them out for physical copy, your packet free of charge. Yeah, it looks like it's yours, yours, you know? Hey. Um, okay, cool. Thank you. And it's uh, revised in October 2021. All right. Yes, sir. All right. So I, just, I ordered it from the link that you gave, and it showed up the next day. Okay, it, great. It says revised on October 22nd, 2021. Okay, let me see if I can find, find that. Um, maybe I can update it right now. Um, not community. That's for twenty nineteen. I'll see if I, they don't have it online. They just have the old one here. Yeah, it, it should be okay. Uh, if y'all see any differences, you know, throughout the semester, uh, let me know. Uh, they should be pretty close to the same. So I think we have most of the quizzes in. So here's your, well, I guess before we do the exam, let me, um, my job as a teacher is to inspire y'all basically. Like if you'd uh, acquired a taste for mathematics, you'd have had this stuff mastered long ago, you know? The only way I learned it was by working hard at it. Again, I was a computer science major forced to take math classes. I did not like it at all. But after 
doing it long enough, it finally clicked and it made sense. And then I had finally acquired a taste for it. You know, math is like beer, you know, tastes terrible the first sip, but you keep drinking it in order to get a buzz, you know. Um, mathematics is the ultimate addiction in life. And it, here's why. All right. If you think about uh, thought itself, all right. So here's here's you or me or anyone. In your head, you have conscious thoughts. And these thoughts might be pictures or sounds or tastes or touch, you know, um, you have uh, sensory inputs, right? Your five senses. And then you have these thoughts in your head. Of course, you have subconscious thoughts, thoughts that you can't really access. They're not fully formulated. The ones that are fully formulated are ones that you can see or smell or hear. You have words, right? Well, the reason why conscious thought is like that is because if there's a second person, if you have a sight, a picture in your head, you can draw it and then show it to somebody else's eyeball, right? Um, if you have a sound in your head, you can say it and it'll go into somebody else's ears, all right? That's why conscious thought is limited to the types of thoughts that will fit into somebody else's physical sensory inputs. But the thing is, is our mind is not limited to the language of our mouth. It's not limited to the language of our ears. But for most of us, the thoughts that we are aware of are exactly those that are limited to the language of our mouth. Blah, 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 blah. It turns out that the vast majority of everything that's going around on around you at all times can't be described with the language of the mouth or the eyes or the ears, all right? Mathematics is what allows you to extend the power of your mind to be able to comprehend the world around you and not limit yourself to words and pictures, okay? Mathematics uh, is the art of thought. My goal is to empower your, your minds to move beyond that of the language of the mouth. If you think about a real simple example, uh, the number nine, that's math, right? Why do we even have a number nine? There's still cultures out there in the world that the only numbers they have are one, two, and many. That's it. Well, Without the number nine, what if, uh, why do we even have it? What if we just, we know the number one and we know addition. Instead of saying nine, we could say one plus 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 one, right? That takes longer. It takes a long time. It's a real simple concept, but without that symbol, that mathematical symbol, the concept as simple as the number nine becomes this long string of blah, 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 blah. You imagine playing football and saying, hey, the 11 of y'all line up, right? Hey, the one plus one plus one plus one plus one and so on and so on of y'all line up. That's the power of mathematics. There's so many concepts that sure you could put it into words, but it's gonna take you a hundred pages where in math it's four symbols. So mathematically, mathematics simplifies the world around you. It's just a language. All right. And it's not any harder than anything else you do in life. Think of anything that you're good at. You're good at it because you like doing it. You know, and you're, you like doing it because you've done it enough to enjoy it. And whatever it is you're good at in life, I guarantee you that it's vastly more difficult than the math we're learning in here. OK, I mean, if you're good at Fortnite, you, you can learn this because this is way easier than that. <laughs> OK. You know, if you could play the guitar, well, you've mastered something that's far more difficult than this, all right? It's just a matter of if you're going to allow yourself to be inspired by it.
Okay, so my prerogative this semester is try to make this as, in, as inspiring and interesting as I possibly can, you know. But again, it's going to be up to y'all to acquire that taste for it, you know. If you enjoy it, it becomes easy. And no matter where you're at in your mathematical abilities, math is always the same level of difficulty. If you're just learning how to add, well, that's hard, you know. But if you're learning quantum physics, well, that's hard. You know, it's the same level of difficulty. You're always at your own boundary. So it's up to you. Do you want to empower your mind? Like if you don't know what your major is yet, the most important thing you can study is mathematics because it applies to absolutely everything. You know, a lot of subjects are nothing but memorization. Just memorize these words, just a bunch of vocabulary. Well, that's not actual comprehension of any kind, you know. You can memorize words and definitions, maybe even get to understand those definitions well enough to use the words in a sentence. And that's that's helpful knowledge, but to really see how to apply that knowledge in the world, you need the power of mathematics, you know, pushing your mind to its limits. All right, this is how we understand that the, the universe is expanding and the rate at which it's expanding is accelerating. And we can tell that by looking at the static on TV. Because one out of every hundred of those little blips that show up on an old analog TV is a photon of light that's been traveling since the beginning of time and is just now reaching us. Based upon the little wiggles and the distribution of those little dots, we can see how the galaxies have formed throughout the universe and explore the fractal nature of the distribution of matter in, in the physical universe. And we can also use it to help us make sure we don't get ripped off when we're trying to buy a car and they're providing us with different financing options. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's, that's what math is to me, the art of thought. And I didn't realize that until math fell in love with me when I was about 25 years old. Before that, it was just homework. And with, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah. So we're gonna be able to calculate like uh, interest and percent rates and all that type of stuff. That's right. Okay, that's cool. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're, I'm going to hit you with percentages all through the semester because uh, that's something that shows up every day. The stuff that you will use in your life for sure, no matter who you are, I'm going to push all semester. Make sure you master that. You know, like y'all should be able to, by the end of this class, you should be able to average your own grade. You know, it's like you should do a weighted, uh, yeah, the quizzes are 20%, the exams are 50, final is 20%, drop your lowest grades. You should be able to calculate your semester average. You know, if I've done my job right, y'all should all at least be able to do that, right? Because that's something that applies to you until you get out of college, you know, just simply knowing your grade. Without this class, you can't even figure out your semester average, you know? So that's how I really know at the end of the semester, if I have a ton of students emailing me, asking me what their grade is, I know I failed <laughs> because they should be able to calculate that average, you know. Um, so here's your exam. This is the end of class. We're going to cut out early today. Uh, since this is the first day, it's just getting to know one another, making sure all the tech works. All right. Tell me something you find interesting about math. So that's your exam number one. Uh, you have until midnight to get your quiz and your exam submitted. And uh, that'll be it for today. Uh, next time we'll do the full two hours, but we'll take a 10 minute break or 15 minute break in the middle. Oh, class is over already? Yeah, yep. so go early today. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. I have a quick question for you. Sure. Do we have anything on Monday that we need to prepare for, read, study up on, or just kind of walk in and Start surprise? Start studying this packet. We're going to start on page one, you know. Okay. 
So we're gonna go over prep for percent and proportion. Um, so there's a section here, right? And then there'll be a homework section. Let's see here. Da, 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 preview, percent, proportions. Let's see. I think I got a lot of stuff here. And then there's a homework section. So okay. start studying up, try to work these homework problems in inside of this uh, packet. And if you want more uh, practice, there's that extra file here. Um, and still of this in the files in Canvas, that textbook and stuff. Yes, sir. There's an extra, there's an extra file called homework. Uh, homework, homework packet and answer key that's extra homework problems i i believe in addition okay. to the ones in the textbook i will probably end up by the end of the semester i'll probably have worked every problem in the textbook uh for the quizzes and the exams with y'all all right all right thank you very much sir sure all right i will see y'all uh monday right yes sir 10 30 all right y'all have a good good weekend.